elk fever with Dwight Shu, one of the nation's top bow hunters. Dwight has hunted throughout the West since 1970 and has taken bull elk in six western states. He is also a full-time freelance writer and photographer, bugling for elk, bow hunting for mule deer, and Bow Hunters Encyclopedia are just a few of his recent books in which he shares valuable hunting knowledge. His articles can be enjoyed monthly in many national hunting magazines. Dwight, his wife Laura, and their daughters Emily and Margie live in Idaho. Steve Jones. Steve, his wife Laura, and daughters Molly and Amanda live in Springfield, Oregon where Steve is the production manager of Game Calls at Wilderness Sound Productions. Steve enjoys all aspects of hunting. He took his first deer with a bow and arrow at age 13, and has bagged blacktail and mule deer, elk, black bear, and javelina with his bow. Jay Reyes. Jay is a medical technologist in Meridian, Idaho. He's been in the llama business for five years and is vice president of the Idaho Llama Breeders Network. Jay leases his llamas to the Outdoor Adventure Program at Boise State University and provides packing expertise and advice. Jay loves to hunt, fish, and backpack, and recently became interested in bow hunting. Larry D. Jones. Larry is nationally recognized for his elk calling and hunting, and he's taken 25 elk in 26 seasons. He's also bagged 12 other big game species in North America and five in Africa. He designs and sells elk, predator, deer, and quail calls. In addition to serving as president of Wilderness Sound Productions, Larry is an outdoor writer, photographer, video producer, and seminar speaker. Let's join Jay, Dwight, and Larry as they pack into the Idaho backcountry with llamas. Jay, who has never hunted elk, has volunteered the use of his llamas in exchange for a chance to learn from these experienced hunters. They're doing pretty good for all the weight they're carrying. Yeah, I think they're doing better than I'm doing. After a five mile hike to their hunting area, everyone pitches in to set up camp. Boy, you did good, old Rudy. Look at that. You need a new dust belt. Look at that. Just about out of dust. Whoa, look at that. Yes, yes. I, I suppose I am. No carpet, I'm sorry. We didn't bring it. No carpet. No carpet? This is a second rate outfit, I can tell right yeah. now. The next morning, Larry and Dwight leave camp early to be in calling position by first light. As they top a ridge, they're looking over some good-looking country. They know from experience this spot has good potential. Boy, look at this neat country. Yeah. A lot of stuff here to call. We can hit all these bases from up here. Look at right below us. There's a beautiful bedding ridge where it flattens out in there. Well, I think from now on we'll stay up very, very high on the ridge because the uh, wind's coming up now. Yeah, why don't you do the calling today and I'll do it tomorrow. Okay. I'll just do a little cow calling in the background. Okay, it's, the as good as this spot is, I think we ought to call it for at least a half an hour. Yeah, let's get one cranked up. Okay, I'll work it.
just in case he comes in. Okay. Let's, let's work him a while, okay? okay. Try to get him hot. Yeah. After calling to the bull for 20 minutes, they realize he's not coming their way and move toward the bull. Testing the wind, they realize the elk will smell them if they continue downhill. We try to get in on him now, we'll just spook him. Let's but, see, let's, let's wait till about, oh, I'd say about two o'clock this afternoon. I think the wind will be steady up. We hope so. Yeah, yeah let's give it till about that. So, why don't we just sit down here and take a break, maybe take a little nap even. Nap even? Nap. Yeah. How's that sound? Four o'clock isn't very early in the morning. Why do you want to take a nap? <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> oh, you got a lot oh, of water. I suppose you want some water too. Well, Didn't I got, you bring it? Yeah, I got a little left. Oh, right here. Here's water. water. Oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the drink. <laughs> yeah. Oh, come on. Quick, go get around. Quick, go get around. The elk are right there. Quick, go get around. Before continuing, Larry makes a trial setup to check his camouflage. Let me get a branch for my bow here. Oh, yeah. That looks like a good one right there. Yeah, this one's pretty good. It's got to be just about right, I know. Yeah. Let's just trim it off a little bit here. I like to do if they, they get too wobbly here, you know, I'll just take and cut a couple of those off so, so if I happen to get nervous, you know, they don't wiggle too much. How do you hook it in there? Well, I just shove it between my Oh, you just cram it in? Yeah, you know, in between my oh, quiver like that, see? Then, see? Right. Okay. That's so let me good. get back in here and you see how I look. Okay. So how does this look back in here? Well, that looks great. That tree on the left really gives you some concealment. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, that branch really hides your ugly, I mean, your really good looking face. But don't smile like that. L wait till you've shot him, then start smiling, okay? okay? Right. Yeah, that's a good setup. All right, great. Okay. Well, let's go call one in. Yeah. yeah. You call one in for me. Oh, my turn. Satisfied with the results, they move in to challenge the bull. Dwight does the calling as Larry positions himself for the ambush. Broken terrain causes wind to swirl, and once the bull smells the hunters, they don't have a chance. Alan. 
Let's look at some ideas we've learned. Call from the top of a ridge to hear bulls from a long distance. Call persistently to excite a bull and make him respond. Check the wind continually to make sure the bull can't smell you. When choosing the ambush spot, make sure you blend in and have shooting lanes right and left. You may find herd bulls hard to call because they won't abandon their cows. When calling, position your partner between you and the bull. Carry water and other essential survival gear. Never take off your shoes around Larry unless you're collecting fur cones. Several days later, using the llamas to pack the essentials, they set up a spike camp four miles from the main camp. Thanks, Dwight. Ten minutes, anyway. Well, I think after breakfast, I'll go in and change into those camo pants. I'll be a little quieter walking through the woods. Yeah, those are, those mood jeans are kind of noises. Yeah, it's a good idea. Okay. Yeah, you might uh, consider, too, Jay, if you really want to get serious about elk hunting, getting some of this Arctic fleece or polar fleece, and some companies call it, but it's really soft and it's it's really warm, especially in the rain. This can get it full of water and it still maintains some warmth and it's just super quiet super soft do you feel how soft yeah. it is yeah it's it's perfect for elk hunting in my opinion where do you uh, get something like that well there's i think there's several companies making it now but i've, I've got this through uh kelly design out of portland yeah that's, i really like it really that's where this was made too and it's it's a good quality product All right. you notice that our packs uh actually this is a pack that uh, dwight yeah. designed right here but uh, it's got a pack frame on it, but it's got that Arctic fleece on it, and it's got a waterproof liner. I It just makes so much difference uh, going through the woods now of quietness. I really feel a lot more comfortable and get right up on the animals. It's really neat. You do I, need to get rid of the nylon pack and get something soft like that so yeah. you can be quiet. I know you haven't hunted elk before, and even bow hunted, and Dwight and I kind of have a, you might say, rules. Okay. Uh, it'd be helpful if you don't talk out loud. Uh, the sound of a voice carries a long ways, and those elk naturally know it's people, and it's, it'll be cure our chances. So. Just whisper that. Yeah, just talk like this, you might say. Okay. Another thing that uh, we do is we, we're bugling. Dwight and I will motion to you that we're going to call, and uh, we stand absolutely still. Uh, it's almost like holding your breath. These uh, bulls can be just over the top of a little uh, knob, and if you um, just move around a little bit, you'll miss their bugle. And so um, it's essential to be stand absolutely quiet. Okay. Yeah, and we always want to avoid any human sounds, you know, like a buckle clicking or chain jangling in your pocket. You can leave it in camp and, you know, sneezing, breathing, wheezing, whatever. Okay. And uh, one thing you'll notice we're going to always do is to get on the downwind side of an elk. So you might wonder, well, why are we heading this way when the elk's this way? It's because we want to get on the downwind side of him. So that's the number one point that we're always going to consider. You just follow us, you know. Okay. And we'll, we'll and hopefully we'll do it right. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. After breakfast, the hunters climb over a high ridge and take a brief rest to enjoy the scenery. Boy, this sure is beautiful. It's spectacular. Look at all these string lights up this whole cane. They're gold, aren't they? Beautiful. How do you plan on hunting this area out here? Yeah, I think we'll start right at the top of this ridge here and work our way out. There's timber on both sides so we can call each side right from the top there. Good basins all the way up. And we'll work our way clear out to that tip of that point out there. There's a good basin on the north slope of that. A little bit of luck we'll be into something by then but if we haven't got into anything then i'd suggest we just drop off of that and come off the top of this ridge and go right down into the bottom of this basin right here where you can see the willows down in there there's probably water in there of course as dry as it is this year that'll be a major factor in finding out know? but also as you come up that that hillside there that graveled hillside with the timber on the far side of it as you reach the top of it there's a flat spot there that's what we call a bench and they bed in those areas so in that up at the upper engine end of that uh, bench, where that timber is, is a very likely spot to find better elk. So uh, 
That'll enhance our chance of going to hit those hot or most likely areas as we can hunt. Now that you pointed out that way, that does make a lot of sense. Keep the trees with these llamas. The hunters follow their plan, and Hike can call for several hours before an elk answers Larry's cow calls. Using the team concept, Dwight sets up out front, and Jay stays completely hidden as Larry begins to call, hoping to pull in a bull with the cow call. When no bull responds to the cow call, Larry tries bugling. A bull follows the cow into view, but as they circle below to approach the caller, they come downwind and smell the hunters. Larry was never able to see the elk, so Dwight explains that the bull was an average five point, about so wide and so high. I don't think I got a shot. I think there's bigger bulls in here, but it was neat. He started to come in, and then he turned, and then you started calling again. He bugled down there, and pretty soon he came right back up in. There was a cow with him, and they, they, they almost came. Two more days of hard hunting produce tired feet and bodies, but no elk. That makes Dwight and Larry all the more determined, and they continue to call, even in the heat of the day. You know, I think if we just stay on one side, they're not going to hear us. Why don't we split up? I'll go just on the other side, because I think if we keep bugling over here, they'll never hear us over there. Or we won't hear them. Yeah. yeah. Lots of times they'll hear us and answer. Right. Uh, yeah, this got quite a crown to it. I think that's a good idea. Okay. I'll just slip just over the side down about 100 yards on the other side over there. Okay. And you can stay over here and we'll just like two bulls bugling back and forth each other. Try to get some excitement Oh, going. I think we can stir them up that way. So. We've done it before. Yeah, let's try that. Okay. Okay. I'll find you a spot in the shade. Short nights and long, hot days take their toll. 
causing some strange behavior. Did you hear anything? No. Did you see anything? No. Did you smell anything? Yes. You. Pee you. <laughs> <laughs> this is elk hunting? Well, there's always time for fun. But it doesn't take long for these clowns to get serious, especially when a bull responds to their call. Anybody get a bull within six yards of him and not get him? I couldn't believe it. I didn't see him until he was about ten yards, and then I saw his antlers just coming around the tree, and I had to try to move to, to, to pick him up right there. I thought he was going to come on the left of me, and when I moved like that, he saw me, and he just whirled, and I just instinctively let go. I shot under him. The next morning, Larry and Dwight returned to the same area. See why this six point is hanging around in here now. Yeah, this marshy area looks pretty good. Bet we find some other elk here. Oh yeah, this is a great looking area. You know, <coughs> since we've only got a couple of days left, I think maybe we ought to split up where we can cover a little bit more ground. Maybe you take this ridge up here and work it out, and I'll go back over here and take this ridge on this side of the marsh. Right okay. Then. Yeah, let's call for a couple hours and then yeah. meet back where we got, got the, that six point in last night. Okay. Yeah. Since we're so short of time. You know, we were trying to get a big trophy bull, but yeah. I don't know. I think I might just take any bull and get a chance at now and not get too choosy. Yeah, it would be nice to have some meat in the freezer. Yeah. <laughs> We've well, only got one more day. You get one in, pick a spot and shoot okay. straight, you know. You Good bet. luck. Okay, I'll see you back. Here's another quick review of valuable hunting tips. You must listen carefully to hear distant bulls. You may hunt more efficiently by setting up a spike camp near your hunting area. Avoid making human noises and wear soft clothing and packs that allow quiet movement. Call around lush, damp meadows and cool north slopes where elk will feed and bed. Use cow calls to locate elk and to call bulls in close. Stay motionless. The slightest movement will spook a bull. Well, I got a five point going, cow calling. He answered, but when I got right in on him, he, couldn't, he wouldn't. Uh, Just couldn't quite get him close enough? No, I got in about 40 yards, couldn't get a shot. How'd you do? Well, uh, you remember when we talked about taking any elk these last couple of days? Yeah. Well, that's what I did. You got one? Yeah. Really? A forked horn, mind you. A forked horn? Yeah, I, I go for the unusual trophies. I don't think I've ever seen a forked horn. No, they're usually spikes, but. Where'd you get him at? Well, right here. Right here? Right here, yeah. I'll show him to you in a second, but let me tell you how I got him. You know, we agreed to meet right here where we called in that six point last right. night. So I just come down here, and I figured you'd be showing up soon, so I heard a little noise just off over the hill right there. And I thought, well, that's Larry. So I just gave a ooh, ooh, ooh on my call, and the noise stopped, and it didn't answer me. I thought, that turkey Jones, he's going to sneak in on me. <laughs> I didn't wouldn't do no, that. No, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. You know so that. I got out my cow call and I just gave a little <laughs> and I heard the noise again and it comes up and pretty soon I could see these forked antlers coming through the trees. And I thought, hey, that isn't Jones after all. 
<laughs> well, he stood and he stared. We had about a five minute staring match at each other and finally he just turned and slowly started to walk up the hill and as I drew, he stopped. And I guess maybe these younger ones aren't smart as they should be. <laughs> yeah. But he stopped right broadside and I had a perfect 20 yard shot broadside at him and I hit him just right behind the front shoulder. He ran up the hill maybe, I don't know, 40 yards and fell over and that was it. Well, where's he at? He's right up there. Let's go you want to take a look? Come okay. On, shine for you. All right. There he is, Larry. Look at this. Pretty nice beauty. bull. Forking horn. See what I told you? Boy. You ever seen a perfectly matched forking horn like that before? i never seen a forking horn. Boy's got big forks. Yeah, he does. Nice going, buddy. Thank Good you. Good job. Thank you. The real trophy. In my opinion, he is. Yeah. I'm happy with him. Let me take my pack off here. Well, Whew. let's get these packs off. Get to work. Don't punch your tag yet. You. That's right, I better get it out, take care of that, and then you can help me with this, and once we get him done, you might as well go ahead and hunt out the rest of the day, and I'll go down and get Jay and the llamas and bring him back up, and we can pack him out with them. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah. You know, that's a real trophy. Well, if you stop to consider that we've hunted almost 14 days here in Idaho, and we haven't had a lot of chances, and My feet. down today, <laughs> the last day is tomorrow, you know. Yeah, so. that's right. Maybe yeah. I'll get one yet. So, uh, well, we had four or five of them in, but just couldn't get the get the right shot, you know. So, well, I'll give you a hand. Let's get our knives and go to work. Okay. Time runs out on this hunt before Larry has a chance to take a bull, but nobody can expect to bring home a trophy every time. That's why enjoying the backcountry and sharing in a friend's success is reward enough. I like this when I get to like these pack animals. Yeah. <laughs> these llamas are. Getting to be more fun all the time. Yeah. That's the first elk they've ever packed out. This does beat packing it on your back, doesn't it, Larry? Sure does. This Jay's not a bad hunt, Martin. Not a bad. <laughs> I'm going to take make this log, okay? Probably bend the rule. On another hunt, Steve Jones, Larry's son, joins Dwight and Larry in the mountains of eastern Oregon. They've set up camp near a large meadow. And you really can't tell what the vegetation's like until we look at it. We might go up in a high point and yeah. check it out. And also it shows water in here, but dry year like this year, <laughs> it could be real iffy. So I think that's going to be real key to finding milk, don't you think? You make sure that there's water in those creeks yeah, that are marked right. on there. Yeah. Well, look at these white areas. These are probably meadows in there, I guess. They could be rock slides, but it flattens out there. I imagine they're meadows. Most of those times, those white, white areas mean there's no, not much vegetation. Yeah, I would say they are. But uh, it looks like we could get on this point right up here, mm -hmm. and we could look straight across and view that whole canyon over there with our binoculars. We could look that over without even driving over there. That point is really close to the road, too, so yeah. it won't take much work to get up we on top. We can just drive right in there and scout that whole ridge from right there. That might be a pretty good spot. Why don't you mark that? And we can drive okay. over close by there and yeah. we'll check that out. Also, you know that um, there's a kind of a clear cut right up on that hillside there. And uh, that, of course, that doesn't show up in the topographic map. There's, it looks like there's a road going in there. I think there'll be water in that draw right there. This shows a spring. Yeah. And as dry as it is this year, they got to be fairly well concentrated around that water. So let's mark that one too. If you think it's a good enough spot, we could drive over there and look for some tracks before we actually get hunting. Well, it looks good from here, so I think we ought to check it out. Oh, yeah. Looks like a herd's just been through here. Look at. Oh, yeah. I'd say that's a bull right there. Pretty good sized track. Yeah. Probably three or four of them, bull and three or four cows. See where they went right up and through there. Well, our scouting paid off, huh? Yeah. I'd say that's just, we found a good spot. So, but this wind is terrible. I think we should come back tomorrow morning when this wind settled out a little bit. It's swollen all over now. Okay, well, let's look at a couple other areas then, okay. Let's review some additional hunting tips. Before you hunt, scout first by studying the terrain and searching for sign. Pinpoint likely elk areas by reading topographic maps. Look for potential water sources, bedding sites, and good feed areas. Take conditions into account. On a dry year like this, 
Elk will congregate around wet meadows and on cool north slopes. Glass from high points, drive roads, and hike trails to confirm your map findings. Elk live in tough country, and you may have to climb some hard places to find them. Get in shape for this kind of hunting. Stopped right behind some oh, brush, man. and he, uh, you know, I was pulled at full draw. So I was holding there, and I started shaking, started shaking. I kept waiting for him to move, and I could tell he was about to bolt, and I couldn't hold it any longer. I thought you had. It. All oh, I could see was man. antlers coming through the brush. Man. It's a nice bolt. The next morning. Let me give it another shot. Yeah, let's try it again. Listen, 
you hear that, Larry? I think Matt he's running that far hillside right Matt down there? there. Yeah, I think he's down on the canyon and just up the other hillside there in that little draw. See that draw? Yeah, yeah. The way this wind's blowing, I think we're going to have to circle clear down and get in the bottom of the canyon and come right up below him. Yeah, we'll have to move clear around or else we won't have a chance. He'll catch our scent. Yeah, it's early enough. I'd say we're going to have a good two or three hours of steady downwind. Yeah, we'll have plenty of time. Yeah. Sounds great. Okay. You guys ready to go kill one? I'll call one in for you. Okay, you do the call and then we'll set up. So, yeah. Or do you want to go to circle around down here and get down in the bottom right yeah. below him? Yeah, let's go. A small five-point runs in from behind and smells the hunters. But up the hill, three other bulls continue to answer Larry's challenge. It's often necessary to get within 200 yards or less to call a bull within range. Larry feels they must get closer and motions for Dwight to move up. I think he was right up there. Yeah. Just above us, maybe two, three hundred yeah. yards. I, I think we might be, uh, we might blow it if we're getting closer. Why don't I get right in here where, where you can't okay. see me? All right, see that, that stump right there? Yeah. I'll get right in behind that. Steve, why don't you get off this way? Okay.
beautiful. Didn't he? It was great. How far away was he? 30 yards, even 30 yards. I had it right on him, but when I let go of the string, he just lurched forward, and I hit him too far back. Well, with, uh, my experience is with a hit like that, I think we should wait. Otherwise, we'll push him out of the county yeah. and never find him. So let's just back off. Those bulls sound pretty high. You think we got time to call one of those in while we're waiting? Well, I suppose they were just right up there. We got to wait anyway, so we might as well go and work one. But I'm going to go over here and mark this spot so we can come right back here after a while. You, uh, you, you'll you call this time so maybe I can get a chance? Yeah, I can do the calling. <laughs> Great. I'd always like to play it safe, so I'm just going to mark it right here. We, I can come right back to the spot. I think that bull will only be about 300 yards up there. So let's, let's go up yeah, a little ways and get a call and see if we find it. Yeah, be kind of quiet. The bulls respond to Dwight's call but won't come in. Again, Larry, Steve, and Dwight must move up to pressure the elk. Let's watch it again. Dwight has used bugling, cow sounds, and raking to excite this bull. Notice saliva dripping from his mouth. You may not have seen Steve because his camouflage works well, and he remains absolutely motionless as the bull walks by only five yards away. An elk hunter must stay cool at tense moments like this. I was screaming at him to try to get five, six yards. I mean, I just wing my bow around. Let her fly. Five or six oh, yards. Oh, like, man. You could just see the antlers coming right down at you. And I thought, man, he's going to walk right on top of you. Oh, man, he did. <laughs> oh, boy. Boy, that bull was hot. Yeah, it? he was. Well, we How still should give him some time. How long, you think? Well, half an hour. Half an hour. You think he hit him in the lungs? Oh, I know it. You know you hit him in the lungs. I seen the arrow there. We'll give him, we'll give him 30 minutes. We'll him up. I think I heard him go down, actually. Yeah, I think he's down. He's dead. Well, it's only been 20 minutes. It's like been an hour. <laughs> been here it's now. really hard to wait. Glad we got something to munch on, anyway. Yeah. Did you guys uh, see that five-point that ran oh, in behind us? 
right, right, right after I just first bugle, uh, bugled down there, that first setup. He got just, just running it. Wow. I don't know where he came from, because I thought we just came through there. We did? I don't he understand, came... but he must have been hiding in a tree somewhere, but, but he really stormed you off. You see him when he hit our wind down there? <laughs> it's like he hit a stone wall Boy, and took off the other way. He really did. He street. But... Well, in ten more minutes, we can crack out Steve's bull. Bounced off the gate there. Oh, yeah, look. Yeah, there's someone that way quite a bit. It's not far. Can you see his track? A lot of times, Steve, I mean, you know, you've had quite a good track experience, too, but I just follow him by track and then kind of confirm it. With the well, I just find a spot and yeah, make sure it's his track. I think Dwight's going to be right. I think he's going to get a little bit of a go there. Hey, how come you guys are looking at the ground? Look right there. Oh, there's his there he is. He's right there. Boy, right. oh, it's beauty. I told you yeah. six point. Yeah, I did. Even oh. six point six. That's a beautiful animal. Well, they're all beautiful. Animals. Yeah. You know, as, as he was coming in, I was saying a little prayer that I would shoot know. in the right spot. He would go down quickly. Well, he did it. The Lord must answer you that time, huh? Oh, oh man. Let's drag him down to get some photographs, huh? Yeah, let's get some pictures of the happy hour. Yeah, that's me. That's my boy. <laughs> Congratulations. Besides those animals, come on. Come on. I didn't know they made animals that big. Look at that. How do you want to spray All right, I want you to smile like you guys are having a good time. Oh, we like are. It's going to be a lot of fun from now on. I don't want happy <laughs> father and son. Hey. Dwight tracks and recovers his bull while Steve and Larry start field dressing Steve's six point. Dwight hurries back to get Larry, who's eager to see Dwight's trophy. Oh, man, look at those antlers. Look at that kind of different antlers. One, two, three, four. Five by six. Look at he's been walling because there can't be a lot of water around yeah. here. But he sure been in it there. Oh. Well, congratulations. Thank I'm, you. I'm really pleased. Great. I Boy, this is appreciate a... the great job of calling you did on him. Well, thanks. You brought him right in. Boy, had about a 30 yard shot. It was exciting. Oh, it was good. Look where we we were set up down there. That's uh -huh. not that's not 200 yards from here, and he just came up and circled right up here and, and piled up right here. So he didn't travel is... far, but so it shows you what a good sharp broadhead will do. Well, maybe I can find that wall tomorrow and there'll be some bulls around there. Maybe you could call me a bull. Well, hey, I wouldn't mind returning the favor. You did a great job calling that guy in for me. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> that's that that's my great. pleasure for well, my good friend and you did a great job of it. my best hunting partner. Well, thank you. I Enjoy appreciate it. it. It was great. This is a fantastic day for anybody. Oh, Two bulls. This is as good a day as we'll ever have. You bet. Now for some more tips. Pressuring the bull by moving forward often excites him, which may cause him to come to your call. Sharp broadheads are essential. The more vessels and arteries you cut, the faster your bull will expire. Wait at least 30 minutes before trailing. If you're not sure of arrow placement, wait one hour. When tracking, don't walk on sign. Keep to one side, following tracks. Stay on those tracks and confirm tracks with blood sign. After some scouting, these hunters locate the wallow the bull has been using. Yeah, there's three walls here. That's it's really sure this meadow up. Sure, wet rut sign for sure. Look at the water in there. That's still muddy. He had to have been here last night. Can't yeah. be far away. Yeah, why don't we call him here? That's a good idea. Let's get right up in the trees where he can. Yeah, that'll be okay. Good idea. Give it a little tutor too. He's gonna call him here. down behind something, hunker down behind something and walk. Okay, all right. I'll try to set up so I can get a good shot on it. Okay, let's go right up through here.
shoot. I hit it. All right. Hit him, brother. Yeah. I see the arrow hit him. All you see him run down through there, right? Yeah. Right down by the alders by the creek? He disappeared right Yeah. I, I'm sure I seen him go down right there by the, right on the other side of the alders. I didn't even know if he <gasps> shot. All I could see was his antlers that broke that brush right there. That's yeah. it. Then he just crashed through there. I could see him come all the way. Oh, oh he was neat. He was a nice bull. Yeah, he was. It's getting late. Let's go check down where you saw him. I thought you, I thought you saw him go. Uh -huh. okay. And then if we don't find him there, we'll back off. Let's go that far. Yeah, let's take it easy when we get next to the creek, though. We might not be completely dead yet. Oh, that's exciting, huh? Oh. Dude. Oh, that was nice. There he is, right there. Oh, right. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 I told you it was a good one. Beautiful bull. Oh, man. Nice job of calling, man. Congratulations. That's a beautiful bull, Larry. Well, thank you. Oh. Isn't he nice? Oh. Oh. Look at your own tickles. He should yeah. be. It's a nice, Look at the nice size bull. of this guy. What a huge chest. I think we got our work cut out for us. Oh, I'll bet man. he weighs 900, weigh 900 pounds. He looks that big. Boy, he is huge. Nice antlers, too, oh, huh? Sorry, yes. Look at that. He's starting to set up point almost yeah. right here. Yeah. They're heavy. Heavy. Look where he's been raking there with the tree bark crammed into his antlers. Right. Yeah. Congratulations. Thanks. This was a fantastic hunt. <laughs> Success played a big part in that. But as on all elk hunts, the values go much deeper. A view of golden aspens on a distant hillside, the aroma of sage drifting on a warm breeze, an encounter with a snowshoe hare, a deer, a grouse, or a chipmunk build lasting memories. Enjoying all of God's creation and sharing it with a friend or son makes elk hunting a grand experience, one in which the taking of an elk must be considered a bonus. Nice and even. I can't believe how close to the folk here in the world. Who cares, huh? I don't. <laughs> this was an unusual elk hunt. Larry and Dwight have hunted together many times and never bagged an elk on the same hunt. You too can enjoy experiences like this, but if you've never hunted an elk, I must caution you about one thing. When you hear that first bugle, you're bound to catch elk fever. A special thanks to the following. Dwight Shu. To order hunting packs used in this video or an autographed copy of Bugling for Elk, Bow Hunters Encyclopedia, or his other books, contact Dwight at this address. Kathy Kelly of Kathy Kelly Designs for her soft clothing, packs, and hunting accessories. Jay Reyes of High Lucker Llamas Incorporated for his packing expertise and llamas, Casper, Shasta, Button, Sourdough, Rudy, Dagwood, and Indy. To order calls used on this hunt, other videos and or informational hunting cassettes and books, call or write this address. Distributors and dealer inquiries welcome.